What's going on everyone? This is Bunny Muffins. Today we have another two hour compilation. This time we're going to be forcing Mage Namzi in all our games. We're going to be playing three games. One in low diamond, one in medium diamond, and one in high diamond slash like low masters. And you'll notice like the gameplay does get harder in each game, but that doesn't really matter that much because honestly like people at this rating, you, you can really get to master zero LP if you like focus a bit on the game. Uh, it depends on like how fast you learn, obviously, like how much you're willing to think about TFT, how much you're willing to play TFT. But overall, like forcing Mage Namzi, very, very powerful. Like you'd be surprised. And it's especially good at this rating because because the power spike you get from two star Namzi is so big and it often beats a lot of the capped out teams at this rating. You may have noticed on my tier list at bunnymuffins.lol slash meta that Mage Namzi is like maybe A tier right now, but that doesn't really matter because it's A tier at high level of play. And in Diamond, it's like decently high relative to the whole population, but if you compare it to like the very best players, it's not that great of a comp. It's like, it's still A tier, so it's still definitely playable, but it's not like super amazing. And the reason why is because it falls off and gets outscaled by some of the other comps, such as the Dragon comp, which is a lot easier to play in the hands of like a pro player. But this comp here where we have the Mage Namzi power spike at uh, two star Namzi, which is really easy to get by the way, you could get this at like level seven. You don't even have to go level eight or level nine. Usually you will beat a lot of these other teams. And like, it's just because a lot of people don't know how to econ properly. They don't know how to position properly. They don't know how to uh, like go for the right comps. And that is the strength of this comp. The floor is like pretty high. This, the power level floor and the ceiling is also high if you get Namzi 3, but it's just hard to hit at like challenger level. But like you don't need to hit Namzi 3 to get to master. So always keep that in mind. So starting back into this game, we had the rod start, I believe, and then we got a negatron. We're not going to build any items. We're just going to kind of try to lose streak. Uh, but we magically won the first round because again, like obviously I am better than the players here. It's not like ego or flaming or anything like that. But some boards that I think will lose streak actually win streak. And it's a big issue because like they're supposed to lose streak. Like I had three one star units. I did not use my silver augment in mage heart and I didn't build any items. So I have no idea how I won. That's how weak the boards are. It's like I'm trying to lose streak and I somehow win the first round. So I leveled up this turn because I'm trying to be like, hey, maybe I could start like a magical win streak if everyone's really weak. Uh, but a lot of people ask like, oh, what's the difference between like a diamond player and a masters player or like a gold player and a grandmaster player, like whatever it is. It's like, it's literally everything because early game boards like for some people it's really obvious what to play for some people it's not and yeah like i played a pretty weak board i played like three one star cavalier units and i somehow won around without any items and not using my augment but enough about that rant let's go back into the game we have the dream astral start we also went for mage heart over blue buff just because it's like it's just better for mage namzi uh, blue buff or sorry blue battery doesn't really help him that much because he has such a big mana pool that it doesn't really accelerate you that much if you're playing something like a lux or a karma blue buff would be better but or sorry blue battery i'm gonna mess that up every single time would be better but you know it is what it is mage cap just gonna be added for more pure damage and we have four mages right now but we're just running the astral so we don't really care uh, we're going to add in the fifth mage, hopefully in the next level. So what item do you guys want here? I went for the tier because I really like Spira Shoujin on Namzi. I think it's almost required. Some people do three full damage items, and that's good too. Uh, because when Namzi does eventually cast, he will one shot everyone. And you could build something like an Archangels. And the way that works is since you don't have mana regeneration, you end up casting later on in the fight and it gives you more time to stack your Archangels. So there's always a balance between what items you get. So it's going to be dependent on like what type of build you're going, what your first item is, decides what your second item is going to be. Uh, so you always have to be thinking about that whenever you're playing the game. Um, but I really like Spirit Shoujin because getting that early cast off just like wipes out a lot of units and it makes your tanks tankier because they're not tanking as many units. 
I said the same word a lot of times. I said tank maybe like four times in the same sentence. I don't know how many. I'm not keeping count, you know. <laughs> but yeah, the tanks in the mage build is Silas. And Silas is not a real tank because he's a three cost unit, not a four or five cost or like eight cost unit like Terra. So you're just not going to be as tanky. So you need to kill things as early as possible in order for them to not get beat up as easily. So here I'm hesitant on buying the Vladimir because I'm facing so many like weak players and I'm trying to keep a lose streak into neutral rounds. Like I'm praying that I'm weaker than them. I did like a quick scout and I should theoretically lose against the people I'm playing. So that's why I upgraded the Vlad, but always scout whenever you're making those decisions if you're trying to keep a streak at the end of, uh, at the end of stage two, because it's really important, right? Because if I win magically, I completely grief my economy. A lot of people don't think about this or they do think about this, but they don't know how to judge whether their board is stronger or weaker than the enemy team. And my recommendation is to practice guessing which team wins. So knowing that is just like really, really good because you essentially become like a fortune teller, right? That's always a good skill. And knowing when to go for an upgrade, when not to go for an upgrade, when you're trying to keep a streak, that's like exactly what you want in this situation. Like me knowing that my board was weaker than everyone I scouted means that I could upgrade the Vlad, which means I save health because I hopefully will kill more units. You may have noticed in the last fight, I only lost by one unit, so I only took two damage. But if I didn't upgrade the Vlad and I wasn't good at knowing that I would lose to him, maybe I take like six damage and maybe I lose by two HP between like getting third or fourth place. Like these things matter in TFT and you always have to keep that in mind. Uh, we get a rod here, so we could build like a death cap. We could build an archangels, either or works. I'm leaning more towards death cap, but we could also greed the items and not build anything at all. Yay, Namzi, we are very skilled players at this video game. I'm gonna put this Namzi in right away. We got five mages right there and yeah. Uh, I, I'm, I'm pretty sure it's death cap. I actually went for the archangels. Mm. In hindsight, I don't think that's the proper play. I really don't, I really don't. So since I did hit the Namzi early on, I'm gonna go ahead and level up to level six because my economy is pretty big. I only lose one gold of interest from leveling early and I wanna start like a win streak because we have like some decent upgrades. We have the Vlad two, I think we had the Lilia two as well, Skarner two, and we had good items on our Namzi. So we're actually gonna try to turn our lose streak into a win streak. Unfortunately, this Karma guy with the last whisper for some reason, it's actually giving me a lot of trouble. My Vladimir didn't cast her. Oh my god, no. This Karma's literally at one life. Thank god Lux finishes that off. We could start a win streak here. And this guy's level 6 as well. So we both leveled up to level 6. Luckily we won. Um, wow. Age of Dragons. If your team has 3 or more dragons every 4th... Okay, let me read that again. Every fourth attack from a dragon friars, a dragon soul blast that deals magic damage equals to 30% of... Holy cow, that's actually pretty good. Gain a Namzi Zippy and a tier... Oh. That one's really cool if you're not forcing mage Namzi, so something to keep in mind. But we're just going to go for this mage cap or mage crown. We get the Shojin that we were desperately wanting before. I, I'm a griefer. See, if I played correctly and built the Rabadon's death cap, I would have saved the tier for the Shojin, right? But we just get the Shojin anyway, so I get bailed out. So, you know, a lot of people don't recognize their mistakes. I do here, but I made a mistake, then got rewarded. Um, so I always like try to keep in mind or keep track of whenever that happens to you and try to just avoid it in the future, you know? It's just such an important item to have, in my opinion, on Namzi, because like, look, he cast so early, he killed half the units. And if he casted later, like, he might be dead, you know? Maybe he doesn't even cast because my front line melted like paper. Uh, it's not the... Okay, so let's think of the hypothetical situation where we had the death cap and then we got the Shojin here and then we still had the tier left over. We could have just used that extra tier to build a Archangel Staff, like we... If we got a rod on the carousel or build like a Hand of Justice if we got a critical strike. So it wouldn't have been the end of the world if we went the Rabadon's build, so I don't know why I'm freaking out so much about the mistake. So now we're facing a Rengar player. Ooh, Protector's Vow on everyone. He's all one-starred, so I, I guess two-star Aphelios, two-star Kiana. Maybe they win this? 
It's tough to say because assassins, yeah, okay, yeah. It depends who they focus. And my Lilia like started griefing. She like didn't finish anyone off. I guess we lose this. Oh, she was about to cast there. If we positioned better and we scouted for assassins, we would have probably beat this guy. Always important to scout. On the right hand side, you'll see like a bunch of swords and that tells you who you're gonna be facing next. Um, I'll show you guys next round, but we're gonna go for probably, I guess tier here. We could go for like second archangels. It's perfectly fine there. Or we could go for a chalice of harmony. Both items work. So tier, definitely the choice there. So we hit a bunch of luxes. Unfortunately, I'm forcing mage Namzi. If not, you could go into lux, you know. I could have just sold this Namzi, put Shojin double archangels on my lux. And lux is actually pretty good. But we roll down a bit at level 7. You typically want to roll down for 2-star Namzi at this point because uh, either stage 3-5 or 4-1. But level 7 is the best odds of hitting... Two cost, or sorry, three cost units. So just keep that in mind whenever you're playing. I'm gonna drop in the astrals. We didn't really generate a win streak, so I might as well just um, play the astrals now for some gold gen and like Vlad's two star. I know we sold the two star Lilia. It hurts a little bit, but we're not gonna be playing her for a long time. We need to get econ back up. Maybe go level eight or level nine. At level eight, we're probably gonna play maybe uh, maybe nine mages if we get. Zoe, and then we could drop like Zyra for someone else, for example. But nothing in this shop here, so we'll just go to the next fight. We are facing off against, oh no, not a Dragon Claw player. Of course, we're going mages, and then someone builds Dragon Claw. Really unlucky. I know I might seem like I'm complaining a lot this game, but I'm just really disappointed from my play earlier still, even though I said it's not a big deal. It's just like very simple. But of course, like, if you're playing in ratings that are lower than what you're normally at, games are gonna feel easy. If anyone here plays League of Legends, you know how when you're playing on a Smurf account, people dodge all your skill shots because they dodge in ways that you don't expect because they like walk in straight lines and things of that nature. That's probably the best comparison for what that uh, that whole lose streak, win streak thing was for me. Uh, we get a spatula here, incredible item because we get to build mage cap. We also got a ZZ Rot portal, like holy cow, that was one of the best wolf camps I've ever seen. So it's for sure ZZ Rot portal, there's no question about that. The other items, it's like, we could do another Shojin for Zoe or Zyra, but I think the mage cap is best because what else are we going to use the spatula for? We'd have to pray for a another spat to really finish off our build, but we could wait one round. Maybe Earth Grab Bag is in the next augment. So we'll just wait this one round. It's not the end of the world if we like don't get the power spike right away because we're not on a huge win streak. If we're on like a four game win streak or a five game win streak or higher, like yeah, I would slam an item here for sure. But we're not, so I could take my time, you know? Uh, Zippy two, uh-oh, Namzi missed, but I think we can finish as long as this Zippy doesn't dodge again kind of dodge but not enough okay that's very good we need like a healing augment here if we got like thrill the hunt or maybe axiom mark oh axiom mark would be good or just like celestial blessing will be fine wow so i have heard battle mage namzi is really good but i did not want to try that this game stand united would have been fine as well because we have one two three four five six traits so that's pretty good value but here it's just like reroll celestial blessing. I'm a little greedy. I'm a greedy player, and also like I'm like kind of smurfing. So it's uh, yeah, rerolling probably is a mistake there. I think you should have taken either stand united or battle mage because it's just like that good. Wow, I actually took windfall instead of celestial blessing. What am I doing this game? I level up. I'm gonna drop in random units. <sighs> what am I doing? What am I doing? What am I doing? What am I doing? I am very baffled at that windfall. It's just 100% Celestial Blessing. All right, I'm trolling because I'm playing at lower elo than I'm used to. Just <sighs> take Celestial or take one of the first two choices that we talked about before there. Um, you know, we make mistakes in games sometimes. That's why we do these reviews. Um, it's to always improve on our play because you're never going to play a game perfectly. No one in TFT has ever played a perfect game because I believe I talked about this before if you're like a old viewer of the channel, but there's too many options in TFT to actually figure out what the best play is. Like if you think about chess, you have maybe like 20 moves per turn you can make, but look at this turn. I have like 
off the item combinations alone, I can make like, I have four item components. So whatever like the number of combinations that is, you can make like, that's already a lot of different choices you have. Maybe it's like seven choices. I don't know the math, uh, but you could put that on every single one of your champions in like different combinations. So just off of that, you have like over like a hundred possibilities already. That's not including buying everything in your shop, putting things in different positions, or just like deciding between rolling down two gold, four gold, all the way down to 76 gold, or like leveling up and then like different variations of those. There's like, in one turn, you might actually have like over 100,000 possibilities, maybe even over like even more of that because there are 28 squares. Maybe it's over a million. I don't even know, but that's just one turn of TFT. And because there are so many different combinations of different plays you can make, you're like you're not going to play perfectly ever. So, uh, well, it'd be very improbable. Uh, on this carousel, Zoe would have been nice to get the mages in, but maybe we go for like a tier. Tier got taken. So I guess tank item would do. We could build like a gargoyle stone plate. Uh, this other sword is probably going to be dead. We're not going to use it for anything. Maybe just a shojin. So we just, we essentially needed two tiers in this carousel or for these item components. Uh, we get a Silas pair here. That's pretty good. We could end up playing that later. Um, this Hecarim with Mage Cap, actually, it's pretty good. Like, watch it in this fight. He'll cast twice and the CC overlaps a little bit, but it's, it's still pretty decent. Like, look, he CCs once. And then as it's ending, he CCs again. So it's pretty good combination. I, I like it a lot. Um, I haven't seen people use Mage Cap Hecarim that often, but like it definitely is an option. The reason why you don't play it that often is because you normally just put your Mage Cap on Zyra because she fits in the comp. But since we have the extra Mage Cap, you could do some cool things here. And you always have to be like thinking on your feet, like which guy is going to be holding these weird combinations like that much better. And you don't have that many games with double mage cap, so keep that in mind too. Since we took Windfall, we're almost level 9, so we're just going to keep power leveling. Like, Namjay 3 is great and all, but maybe we could just win with like Zoe's. We could play like two different two star Zoe's potentially. Uh, but this Kaisa going to be hard to kill because Namzi's more like AoE damage. This guy's like single target high health, so yeah, we get rocked there. Uh, he's also got Axiom Arc and Blue Buff, which is incredibly good on Kaisa. So now on to Treasure Dragon. Don't need this. Uh, we don't have enough room for the Thieves Gloves. This would be takeable otherwise. <laughs> I mean, we have to get that right. We get a Shojin, we get a Jeweled Gauntlet, and we get another Mage Cap. That is pretty funny. I don't think I've ever had this many Mage Caps in my game. We also have the Mage Essence from the other thing. Uh, not Mage Essence, Mage Heart that gives us stuff. We're going to roll down. Maybe Jace could take a Mage Cap. I don't know why I didn't buy Jace. That's for sure. Like Jace over Ekra might be good. I don't know. Well, Shojin the Bard. Shojin's better on Zoe, but we don't have a Zoe, so I can't really use it. Uh, there's the Hecarim 2 buy that. I guess I could have waited for items. I could have finished my roll down first. Don't really need Seraphine. Who gets this Jeweled Gauntlet? I probably put it on Lux for now or maybe Zyra. We could also transition into something like an Aurelian Soul because Aurelian Soul could definitely use the Mage Cap and Jeweled Gauntlet plus the Spear of Shojin. So lots of different things we could do here. Uh, but we don't have like that many Astral units, but I don't think that's that important. You don't really care that much about the Astral buff. Like 8 Astral is obviously good because it gives a lot of AP, but we could probably just duo carry with the Namzi and the Aurelian Soul if we hit it. Uh, this Rengar killed our backline. We have to be careful of the Assassins. We've been losing to Assassins a bunch with this comp, and you'll see that in the other games too. We'll be playing three games total. Also, like if you have questions, leave them in the comments below, but also timestamp it. I say this in every compilation video, but it's just that important because it's hard to keep track of everything um, if the video is really long. There's Soraka. Soraka's pretty good. Her healing helps me out a lot because my team is not tanky at all. Oh, there's Zoe. I need Zoe. I am down bad for Zoe. We could give a Bastrals. Okay, drop her in. We could also drop Skarner for something else. Because uh, we do have a two-star Hecarim that's pretty tanky. Wow, I actually put my Jeweled Gauntlet on Hecarim. I feel like that's a mistake, but 
it is what it is. We sell the Namsies. It's going to be hard to hit because we're level 9 and we... I mean, you could still hit it on level 9. But we just don't have that much gold and we're going for the 2-star legendaries right now. Uh, so even though Namsi 3 is a win condition, sometimes just playing a lot of strong units is another one. But we beat the last guy. This new shop, we could probably chill a bit. I do want Soraka 2 eventually. We could probably drop Skarner because she gives my team tankiness. I know Skarner's a bruiser, but oh man, can we get the Silas 3? I'm scouting around. There are a couple of Silas players, so probably not. Uh, so we're probably going to skip that out. I actually end up buying it. That's definitely a mistake. Oh wait, never mind. It's not a mistake because the person I'm facing who has a Silas has like no life. So we could wait for him to die before we finish him or before we finish our roll. So actually going for the Silas is good here. Uh, good Namzi ult. That guy grouped up specifically for me. So that was really good. Uh, so we could just pick up a free win there. On this carousel, there aren't really that many goodies. We wanted the Warmogs, maybe Sunfire Capes a good settle and then if not hand of justice is decent we could use that on an aurelian soul potentially later on so we get soraka too that's really nice <sighs> please sell the oh my god big mistake there why am i not selling skarner instead of hecarim 2 <sighs> man why did i reforge that i could have put that on zyra and then just swapped into aurelian soul mistakes happen you know uh, but yeah, Skarner, normally you keep him late game in mage comps because he's giving you Astral, but I took Astrals out, so I don't really need him. And like Bruiser, while fine, Soraka is essentially giving Bruiser to your team as well because she just heals everyone. So I just took out the wrong unit. I, I don't know why I did that. Hecarim is really good because he's a four cost unit, so he's tanky, and he CCs a bunch of units, so he's just clearly much better, but... Hopefully we fix the mistake. Maybe we could find a new Hecarim. Maybe we could even get like a two-star dragon to tank for us. Uh, but let's see what happens in this next shop. Nothing. We're just going to wait till after the neutral round before we uh, figure out the rest of our team. But we pretty much have the crux of the team already. Good Bardle. Bard's a great counter to the Seraphine comp. So if you see a lot of them, running like a Shroud or Bard is like one way to deal with them. But this Silas is actually tanking a ton because Soraka's healing. Oh man, Soraka's so good. She's probably one of the most underrated units. I feel like a lot of people don't play her because she doesn't have many synergies. She has her own, which is Starcaller, and then she's also a Jade, but no one really like plays the Jade synergy outside of Jade comps, so she's always a little weird like that, but really powerful and just to flex with. Do I buy this Aesol? I should. Wow, I am... If I had a time machine, well, I probably wouldn't fix what I do in a TFT game. I'd probably fix a lot of other stuff instead. But like, <laughs> man, I really wish I could replay this game because I have such a good, I have such good items for this, right? And I have good health and I have good econ and I could have spiked a lot harder than I did this game. Oh, it's a Kaisa guy again. It's going to be hard to beat him without another damage carry because... Namzi just isn't that great at taking out Kaisa. For some reason, we have like 10 units alive against her, so I guess we could win a 10v1. Um, but I feel like I shouldn't win that fight. I guess I do have like the two-star Soraka healing everyone. Um, so I am rebuying the Hecarim. I don't know why I'm skipping the Aesols and Aoshins. I could definitely just sell Namzi for Aoshin and drop a Mage Cap on him. Uh, so lots of mistakes again. Please sell the Skarner for this Hecarim. Like... Thank God. <laughs> you know, sometimes you learn after a couple of, a couple of times. But definitely the play here is going for Aoshin 2-star and maybe even Aurelian Soul 2-star. So I could sell the Namzi, drop Shojin on Aoshin, drop a Mage Cap on Aoshin, and do uh, Archangels as well. And then same thing for the other guy. Just like both of them have the same items and just run both of them. And that would probably be a very, very strong late game board. And then maybe we'd add in a Terra or something to really tank for us. Just like the typical dragon comp, but instead of running Shivana and stuff, you run like a bunch of mages and Aeotian, Aurelian Soul, and Terra. 
just because we have all the mage caps as well, we can make all of them mage capped. So we get that Yasuo, that's better than Hecarim. So we sell him. We're going to sell the Zyra as well because mage cap Yasuo is incredibly good because he gets like the knockup every fourth cast, I believe. So if he casts twice, it just accelerates the time he gets a knockup like that much faster. But we're against a golden egg guy, so we're not out of the woods yet. Because golden egg is, if you get the egg right, it's probably the best thing ever. He has he got a radiant item from it and probably some other goodies. He has a lot of items actually, so it's actually a little scary. But I think the Soraka 2 healing, holy cow. It, it, Soraka is definitely the MVP this fight. And I guess Yasuo is doing a lot of CC as well. So we're able to beat him there. But Namzi, imagine if Namzi was just an AO Shin instead, like the games would be even easier. So I don't know why I skipped him on the roll downs, but it happens. Uh, Zoe here would be really nice. She's got an Archangels already, but I might want to deny the Dragon Claw because Dragon Claw counters my team, right? So if I deny that from him, it's just really, really good. Uh, he didn't go for the Dragon Claw because he already has one, but he could have used it for a different unit. I feel like that would have been fine. Uh, but we have so much gold. It's more gold than I know what to do with. And we already won the game because we're probably beating him this turn. I'm just going to go for like three star Soraka or Bard and call it a day. But if you're playing for serious, like get the dragons and throw them in. Because I'm running a three cost dragon and I could be running a five cost dragon. If, if the five cost dragon isn't better, the game's just not balanced, right? Um, but we hit the Silas three. Don't hit the Soraka three or the Bard three, but it's okay. Oh, he hit Seraphine 3. That actually is a little scary for us because Seraphine 2 and 3, the difference is like humongous. Oh, he actually got two Radiant items and we're getting destroyed by Zyra here. Uh-oh. Maybe we actually lose. Okay, we I trolled last round. I need to actually play real stuff. Um, I need a position for Zyra, so I probably want to move my Namzi up one square. I'm also like probably need to move my bard and like my important units up one square. So we have three units on the second row and four units in the back. All the units in the back, Zyra's gonna hit them. And those are like my less priority units. Like Bard definitely big priority, Namzi big priority, and Soraka big priority. So I guess that change was enough. Bard casting right away is so good against his build. He should spread out against me, but for some reason he's not. So we're able to kill the Seraphine 3, and is that enough to win? It's looking like it. Holy cow, Soraka MVP. Yeah, Seraphine 3 is definitely a bigger spike than Silas 3, for sure. Uh, but we could have won if we just played better anyways, but it, it, the game became close for no reason. Um, but not the cleanest game. The other two games, I definitely think I played much better. So let's hop on into game number two and three. Let's move on into game number two. We started off with two Vladimirs and a glove. And we got a bow, which is a little weird, a little awkward, but it's not the end of the world because you can build a ZZ Rob portal for the Namzi comp. And we're gonna right click and check to see if Namzi's in the game, and we see it right now. Also checking the Mirage variant at the same time. We're gonna go ahead and buy this Garner here, hopefully get an Astral start for some econ. And then for some reason we get dropped two Silas's. That's pretty good. It's probably the one of the best things you can get. Uh, so out of these three options, we don't really have much of a choice. Future Sight, Cringe, Scope Weapons, that's not for uh, Mage Namzi, and Metabolic, great, because we're going to be lose streaking at the start. So we're going to go ahead and take the Metabolic. Of course, you could Scope Weapons because we do have a bow and a glove, so you could go into some sort of attack speed, attack damage composition. Uh, so it definitely still is an option. But this is a Namzi game, so we're going to go for the... Metabolic Accelerator, and then we're going to put in three mages for now. Unfortunately, no Astrals quite yet. We're going to decide to not level up because, again, we're going to be lose streaking with this Metabolic Accelerator. So it's not that it's horrible if you win streak, but if you do win streak, you better make sure you actually keep it up. And if that's the case, why did you take the Augment in the first place? This Augment is generally 99.9% .9 of the time made for lose streaking. I'm also not going to slam the ZZ Rot right away just in case there's like a chance I pivot to something else. And because, well, I do want to lose these rounds. This person has Portable Forge, Astral's out, two star in Italy, so for sure we're gonna lose this one. And we took a four unit loss, I think, but we're still at 90 health because we get healed up every turn. So still no Astral's. 
That's a little bothersome, but we could drop in the Lagoons for now. So we are facing someone with a blue buff Nasus. Interesting choice of item holder. I personally would have probably sold it and dropped it on maybe Talia. Because blue buff on Nasus, I don't really th <laughs> think it does that that much. But, you know, to each their own. Uh, do we end up winning this round? No, we don't. Should lose this one. I'm going to skip ahead a little bit. And yeah, three unit loss. Again, doesn't really matter too much because we save two health every single round. I should be buying the Skarner. Don't know why it didn't. Uh, so on this carousel, what do we need? Maybe like a rod, maybe a tier. Uh, both of those will do. Here's great because Spear of Shojin and the like are really good. And you could also make some Mage Spatulas with the tier. There's really a ton you could do with it. You could also do like a Static Shiv, Hand of Justice. The options are almost limitless. Unfortunately, we still don't have Astrals. Astrals is just more reliable than Lagoon. Because with Lagoon, you really want like a Spear of Shojin or Blue Buff to get the stacks faster. And we just don't have that yet. But it's okay. Um, we'll just keep the ship sailing. I actually think we made a mistake here by leveling. I leveled to play Lagoon with three mages, but it could have caused us to win some of these rounds, so it was a bit risky. Before you do that, always scout to make sure you're weaker than the people you are going to face. And there we go, we get our first Namzi, so that's really, really good. We also get Lux for Astral, so we could start swapping some things out, but again, we don't want to win this round, so it's a little awkward. I have to just drop in the Lux, but I think I should have played the Astrals. I could have put in Vlad over Talia, um, I guess I'm picking up the Lagoon reward and then probably never playing Lagoon after this. So I guess playing the Lagoons is fine, but I just get like two gold. Astral's gives like, I think it's one and a half at this point. So it's approximately very similar rewards. All right, so we get demolished here, which is not ideal, but it's good that we lost at least. So now we're on full streak into the neutral rounds. The only issue is we did not make economy that much during this, so I do kind of regret leveling up because we could made gold through the economy trait, but we did play the Lagoon, so we were able to get those activated. So from these Krugs, we get a chain vest, we get some gold, and we get some more gold. So I should make interest here. I probably should have just sold the Astral units. This chain's a little awkward, it doesn't really help us build any good items. So we're just gonna slam the ZZ Rot at this point in the game. I doubt we're gonna be winning rounds with it. So we could just leave it at that. Once we see something like a Spear of Shojin, we'll definitely drop in the Namzi and be good after that. Uh, this person has Lux, Giant Slayer, Archangels with Rich Get Richer. He's got 50 gold. Rich definitely do get richer in this world, don't they? Money's kind of like a funny thing, both in TFT and in real life. Sometimes the way it works is the more you have, the less you need it, and the less you have, the more you need it. Okay, so we have our next augment, and we get preparation, ludens, or electro charge. So when you're doing reroll, obviously preparation is incredibly good because you get to make maximum usage of the augment. But if you're going mages, like ludens echo is perfectly good also. Uh, they're both probably pretty close. Preparation's probably a little overtuned right now. But if you're going mages and the pick is not Luden's Echo, then the game just simply not balanced. So we're going to go with Luden's Echo. We're going to drop in this Namzi, drop in this Lux, get rid of the goons. Oh, and by the way, like the game isn't balanced. So like you also have to keep that in mind too, right? So <laughs> it's a bit of a bit of a dilemma there, you know? It's like if the game is balanced, you should pick a certain thing, but the game is not balanced. So you have to balance the two when making your decisions, I guess. Uh, we're gonna make 40 gold though. We're facing a Collector Karma. Wow, that is aggressive. Hopefully the ZZ Rot portal buys us a lot of time. That's normally what its job is. Uh, Namzi, I doubt he's gonna be killing much because Jade does give healing. So if he doesn't one tap, they're gonna heal back up a bit. And it looks like we were able to get a little bit done. The Ludens definitely did a lot of work. We actually wanna lose this round by like one unit. That would actually be ideal. Do we kill the set? We do not. You know, two units, that's fine too. But we're on a seven loss streak, so we get a lot of bonus gold because it caps out at three gold after five losses. Let's see what we get here. We get a Talia and we get a Lilia. We could play those, but we already have the Astral Mages in. I'd rather just keep that in for now. I mean, I'll buy the Talia just in case I run her randomly, but we, we just really don't need her or the Lilia. Eventually, maybe we could play seven mages, but... We could kind of just wait. 
because uh, we need to level up a bit. And we also need to hit this two-star Namsi before we think about going into the later parts of the game. Uh, so this person destroyed us. I think we're going to get one more cast stop. Maybe that kills with a Ludens proc. Very good. Wow, we actually won this round. Holy cow. The AoE from Lux and Namsi really just propelled ourselves because we have Ludens Echo. So that's one of the weird things about Ludens Echo. It can change fights very drastically, especially if you have mages. So we definitely want to get either a damage item or a mana regeneration item. So Rod, Sword, or Spatula for Mage Cap are all going to be good here. I went ahead and grabbed the Spatula. We could make Mage Cap and at level 7 we could run 7 mages, which is really good. If you don't do that, you end up running a random Zyra at level 7 instead. And nothing wrong with that, right? Uh, but it's just better to have seven mages than just purely adding in whispers. Uh, we're gonna put the mage cap on Skarner. We could always sell him later on. He's not that critical to the comp. A lot of people, they look at composition tier list and they're like, oh, in the mage comp, you either run Malphite or Skarner there. And you do that for Bruiser, which like, yeah, most people do that. But you don't have to play that unit. You could always sell it because it's a one star or one cost unit at the end of the day. So that means they're not that powerful. So you could always replace it with other things. Like if you're comparing a Skarner 1 star, or sorry, Skarner 2 star with a Bard 2 star in the late game, and yeah, there's no way that the Skarner giving you two bruiser buff should be stronger than the Bard. But a lot of people run that anyways. We hit a Silas 2, which is absolutely crucial here because, well, he's like our main tank and it just buys a lot of time for our Namzi to get multiple casts off. Whenever you're playing mages, your tank's job is not to carry. Your tank's job is just to buy time. That's why in a lot of mage comps, ZZROT portal is really popular because you don't really need them to deal damage with a Bramble Vest. You don't really need them to be a super tank with like triple tank item. You just need them to buy a little bit of time so that your dudes can cast and hopefully kill some people off. And if you kill people off, they won't need to tank as much because they're not being damaged as badly. Can Namzi get this last cast off? No, he cannot. So we don't get to keep our win streak into the neutral rounds, which is fine. But look at this. We lost pretty much the entire game, and we're still at 60 life, which normally we would heal, or sorry, normally we would be at around 40 at this point. So definitely helped a lot with that augment. You heal two after every player combat rounds, and we've had 10 of them, so we just two times 10, heal 20 life. Sorry, we'd be at 42. I forgot we... Um, you heal at the end of the round. Pretty decent items here. We get a jeweled gauntlet, which is great on Namzi, and then we could build a tank item with the with the other stuff. The items you want in this comp are just three Namzi items, chalices, and ZZ Rot portals. Everything else you just slam because you don't really care about getting perfect items with the other components. So you just Use them, build them as early as possible so you get as much value as possible out of them. Okay, there's another Namzi. I want to roll down till I hit Namzi 2. If not, the game's going to be a little sketchy, which it is right now. So we're facing someone who luckily didn't roll down. He's level 750 gold, so he's probably doing like a fast 8. Uh, so we'll just have to watch out for that. I build the Gargo Stoneplate over the Dragon Claw because we could use the Negatron for a Chalice, potentially. Okay, Heimerdinger did some good stuff there, stunned the Ezreal. Heimer actually does a lot with the Ludens buff, so it's actually really nice. But I don't think our Namzi is powerful enough to really kill anything yet. But we're just winning purely from Luden Ludens procs. Like the Lux, Talia, and Heimerdinger are just procking it very often. And look at the damage chart on the right hand side. Talia did the most damage, who would have guessed that? <laughs> Let's see what augment we get here. Thrill the Hunt, decent. Best friends, not really that great. Bruiser, not really that great, so we could reroll this. And we get Axiomark. We get one of the best ones for Namzi. Yay, we're very good at the game. So clearly it's just Axiomark, and yeah, we are very chillin' here as long as we hit Namzi 2 right now. I'm gonna roll down and we hit it at 37 gold, which is good enough. Now is a important decision making point. So a lot of people when they do a reroll comp, they're like, oh I I'm always gonna reroll it and I'm never gonna level up. So what do you have to think about when you decide whether you wanna reroll at level seven or level up to level eight when you're doing a three cost reroll? So three cost reroll, the optimal times to get a three cost unit is at level seven and level eight. So it doesn't really change your odds from hitting the unit. 
The one thing that does affect your decisions though, is wow this fight's really close, we barely lost that, is whether you can actually hit 3 star units. So you may have noticed already, we don't really have too many copies of Namzi. we only have 3 Namzis, but we do have 6 Silas's, so it does make us lean more into re-rolling for Namzi 3 and Silas 3 at this point because we're rolling for two different things. A lot of times if you're just rolling for one thing, you don't really need to uh, re-roll. You can level up instead and put in extra units. It also depends what your composition wants. As we said before, at level 7, you want to play... what's, his, what's her name? Uh, you want to play an extra Zyra because you don't have a mage cap. But we do have a mage cap this game, so at level 7 we could fit in 7 mages instead of 5 mages. That means we run into the same problem at level 8. We have nothing really that great to put in at level 8, apart from an extra Zyra. Which, don't get me wrong, with a mage cap on Zyra that is a good combo, but it doesn't really provide that much power. So I'd rather... let's get the sword here. Uh, this could be Shoujin or Infinity Edge. So I'd rather just stay level 7, with this 7 mage power spike and roll down for Silas 3 and potentially Namzi 3. And if we hit it, we hit it. If not, we could always reassess and maybe go 8 if we're running low in life. By the way, a great thing about Namzi is that Namzi often walks up a step. So last fight he didn't, so he got hit by Zyra, and this fight he didn't as well. Uh, it depends on how the enemy spreads out their tanks. Uh, so you may notice sometimes Namzi walks up, sometimes he doesn't. You could always put Namzi in the second row. Uh, but sometimes you just default it to the back because you have some chalices, it really depends on the exact positioning. But that's why it's important to scout, because if I scouted the past two rounds, I would not have gotten Zyrid on my Namzi. So we're going to roll down a little bit. We hit another Zyra just in case we want to go 8. Uh, probably roll down a little more. We hit another Namzi, great. Vladimir, and then we could pause there. Okay, so we are running into a triple dragon guy, but he's all one star dragon with 50 gold. Interesting choice. I normally would not pivot into this dragon board unless I had at least one dragon 2 star, and if I don't have a dragon 2 star I would roll, but to each their own. I should win this. If I don't, something's really wrong with the game. I don't win this, holy cow. Yikes. I have a bunch of upgrades, he doesn't, he has a determined investor that hasn't invested into diamond hands yet. And he still wins. It's probably because we don't have three Namzi items. So Locket, not good enough. It does give us the Shoujin and another stone plate, but again, not good enough. Ah, man, why did we get the same Radiant item twice? Okay, this might be good enough. But... Uh, actually, not bad. I probably should take this. Because it gives me starting mana, which is really important. Let me just pause for a moment there. I know we hit the nuts here. We have like... Radiant Infinity Edge with a Jeweled Gauntlet with a Spear Shoujin. But in the last shop here, we have Spear Shoujin, we have Ionic Spark, and we have Radiant Shroud of Stillness. So Radiant Shroud of Stillness slows down the enemy team's damage, and it gives my team starting mana. It gives us, it gives our whole team 15 starting mana. That's incredibly good if you're running Mage with Luden's Echo. There's no reason I should not have taken this. Another thing to note, is in mage comps right now, you're running both Silas and Zyra, so you get Whisper Trait. Whisper Trait reduces the enemy team's magic resistance and armor, so you don't need stuff like Static Shiv or Ionic Spark. But we notice in this game, I'm not actually running Zyra, so Ionic Spark becomes very valuable all of a sudden. So this is a for sure take right here. I don't know why I skipped it. Uh, but this is also takeable as well, because obviously, like, Radiant IEJG, very good. I decide not to take that either. I am just fishing for who knows what now. Uh, let's go back a little bit. So the Bramble one, not very good, but this one is definitely takeable. I could have just Rabadon's Death Cap plus Hextech Gunbladed the Namzi as well, and that would have been perfectly fine. But somehow I keep rolling. I don't know why, like, it's really stupid of me. Uh, but we do get a really good Radiant item at the end of the day, which is Radiant Shojin. But I feel like... We could have just saved the gold, taken some other stuff. Also, I think Bloodthirster isn't bad here. You could also Zeke's or you can do Zephyr. Both are fine, or all three options are fine. But maybe Bloodthirster is a little better because I want to protect my Namzi because he has a Radiant item and I'm building my entire composition around him. 
So we do want to pick up the Skarner. We want to remake Skarner if possible. So when we do level up, we could switch the Mage Cap onto someone else. So let's see who we're facing here. Two Star Jace. Wow, we didn't roll. So that's a little worrisome. We really should have. Uh, but let's see how much damage this Namzi does. He's not casted yet. And then he got Bard ulted, so that's really not good. So even with the Radiant Spirit Shojin, he didn't cast. That's incredible. But he came back with a Vengeance with the Bloodthirster, healing him all up. So that is good enough, you know? And we're really not hitting any Namzis or Silas's. It's actually kind of bad. So we get the new Skarner there. We could level up here. Uh, maybe I should have leveled up there. Mainly because we didn't hit anything, and we had enough gold to level up and still have like 40 gold. We could have still hit some upgrades. There's another Namzi. Okay. No Silas's. Another Namzi. Okay. I should all in here, roll to zero after hitting that, but we ran out of time, so I won't. But if you roll faster than me, which you should, because I roll at the. at literally a snail's pace, you should like do those rolls really early and decide when to all in. And hitting that. 6 Namzi means that we probably should hit if we roll down. We'll, we'll probably hit a Namzi every 12 gold, so every 6 rolls approximately. And since we had 50 gold, there's like a very high chance we'd hit it. Maybe it's like 80% chance if we rolled all the way to 0. Assuming no one's contesting us, which I don't think they are. All the math is approximate. You could feel free to do the math yourself. Um, but You don't actually know the exact math because you don't know how many other 3 costs everyone else is holding. So it's always good to estimate in those cases. Uh, I really need to roll down fast though. I'm going so slowly. Just looking for Silas and I'm really surprised we have not hit any Silas's ever since the first 6. <laughs> it's as if he disappeared from the game. Same with this Namzi. Like all of a sudden, no Namzis. And I'm like 99% sure we're not contested. I don't think we saw any. Silas is contested. I, I, I realize that, but Namzi for sure isn't. Oh, we're going to get Zyra here, aren't we? Okay, at least we killed her and the Soam. Holy cow, my, my Namzi's so smart. He just <laughs> goes directly for their carries. All right, what do we want here? We could go for a tank item or a support item. So getting a Trap Claw wouldn't be so bad. Getting a Sunfar Cape, decent. Titan's Resolve, decent. Thieves Gloves, decent. End up going for a QSS because it has Zoe on it. Zoe is an amazing unit in mages. You guys already know that if you have been watching my videos. So we could sell this Talia, don't need her anymore. There's another Namzi, so I could sell the Zyra and go from there. Probably roll down to zero here. Yeah, or sell that guy. Pick that up, roll down. Do I hit? Uh, there's a Lux, I don't really care about her though. Okay, we'll just we'll just keep it like this for now. I'm gonna mage cap the Zyra, put the ZZ Rot on the new Skarner. I know we're only at six mages now, but it's it's honestly whatever. Uh, sell the Lux there. I probably should have leveled up though. I don't know why I didn't at this point. Because we were close, but we just weren't hitting. Unlucky. But as you guys can see already, Namzi two star decent enough to stabilize. We obviously have really good augments for it, so you have to be aware of when you have good augments, when you have bad augments. So right now we have one economy augment in Metabolic, and then we have two combat augments in Ludens and Axiomark. There will be other games where you have two econ augments instead of one. There will be also games where you have three, uh, what's it called? Combat augments instead of two. So in the games where you have three combat augments, it's probably gonna be harder to hit the Namzi two star, or sorry, Namzi three star because you will have less gold than you would in this game. You also have to realize in the other games where you have like two econ augments that you'll most likely hit the Namzi 3, but your team will be less powerful in a fight. So a lot of people, they send me messages, they're like, oh, how did my team lose here? Because I have three star this, three star that. A lot of times it's because you had three economy augments and that just doesn't help the power of your team because a three star, comp could lose to a two star comp if they have three combat augments and you have zero. If you think about it, a lot of the augments are just kind of like a trait bonus. It's obviously like a little smaller, but it's still like a pretty good power boost. So who do we put this Edge of Night on? Maybe we drop it on Zoe or Zyra just so they are protected so they cast. But here we're probably just gonna try to save gold to level up to eight and then drop in a random mage. I think we are... 
How much gold do we need to level up? 28? Unlucky. We only have 20. Yeah, I dropped the Edge of Night on Zyra. We're positioned a little weirdly right now, but our Namzi does have a Bloodthirster. So I'm not really concerned about Namzi getting bursted. Because look, the Bloodthirster shield proc right there, and getting hit is good for Namzi because it gives Namzi mana. You know how people are playing Karma right now and they're putting her on the front line? The reason why they're doing that is because getting damage generates mana. And with that in mind, like it's okay to take damage. In fact, it's good too because you get to cast earlier and faster. Wow, my Zyra completely obliterated his board because he had like, what, seven units in the back line? You always have to be wary of facing other Zyras because getting Perma CC'd like that is really, really bad for you. Uh, you may have also noticed, like, oh, why aren't we playing seven mages anymore? One, we needed to get in the Zyra because of the Whisper. She makes much better use of the mage cap. We just hit her two-star recently uh, when we swapped her in. And another thing you have to keep in mind is Namzi is three-starred right now, so she does a lot of damage. And with that in mind, you don't need to overkill people. And notice right here, I did something very interesting. I actually rolled down at level 7 instead of level 8 to find a mage. The reason why is because the mages I'm looking for is Talia, Vladimir, and Lilia. And I just need to play a random mage to level up to level 8 and put in, right? So if I actually leveled up to level 8 and then rolled down, I would have had a lower chance of hitting Lilia, Talia, or Vladimir. So instead we did it this way, roll down at level 7 and then level up after we hit the unit just so we could play them for a trait bot. Dude, this Bloodthirster, I'm not gonna lie, he's doing a lot of work. I think this Pantheon wins because he has a lot of healing and and stuff, but yeah, it, it was pretty good, pretty good. All right, what do we want here? Probably Shroud so we don't get Shrouded. We don't need the other Mage Cab but we could take it for fun. It's denying the Shroud, that's what I'm doing right now. If he takes something else, then I take something else, but if he wants to go for the Shroud, then I take it, because Shroud just completely obliterates my team. Uh, we also have an item remover, so we could take advantage of that and cycle the Shroud. All right, so I'm gonna move my team around a little bit because I was getting hit by a lot of random stuff, and I also don't wanna get Zyrod, because he is running Whispers, I believe, so yeah, I don't wanna get Zyrod. I'm gonna drop this on her, or on Skarner, and then hopefully this should win. We need to deal with this Pantheon somehow. Like, he's so unkillable. It's actually incredible. Ah, man. It's just he's so tanky. I don't know what to do. So I guess we can, like... Do we try to kill the Pantheon early or just try to kill everyone else early? Unfortunately, we're not really in charge of targeting. Namzi just kind of shoots the thing out to large groups, but... It's really tricky. I'm also saving my item remover because I have one more life after this. So I could item remove now and put the shroud on someone else, but it looks like this guy isn't moving that much. Uh, as long as we hit the Zyra or Bard, like I'm fine. So I've had my Silas on the Pantheon this time. I wonder if that makes my team live longer. A lot of this also comes down to Zoe RNG, but we're, we are able to take down the Pantheon that time. Uh, if Zoe just gets the right abilities, such as the invulnerability when my team's about to die, it's going to be incredible. So we win there. Very good. Um, I believe this game was around like Diamond 2 or something like that, but let's move on into the final game. All right, let's hop into the last game. This game was around like D1. Like I think there are like a couple masters in this game. So on this ELO, like people are still making like tons of mistakes. Uh, they might know like what all the comps are and like what's good, but they don't know the best ways to get into those builds. Uh, so of course we're gonna be forcing the Mage Namzi build again. I believe I already checked early on to see what the Mage build is, but we do have a Spear of Shojin here already, so that's already like a good start. For the Augments, we're gonna go for Metabolic Accelerator. Don't really want to use a Dark Flight Essence for this comp, obviously. Like of course you could have played it, but it's not the end of the world. Um, and maybe we could even do some sort of like Dragon Mancer thing with this because we have like a half a hand of justice, we have half an IE, so we do need a couple more items still, so it's not like that forcible, but we could kind of play this in the early game. You could have also like held on to all the astral units. Uh, I wouldn't have minded that either. The other option was Knife's Edge. I guess you could take that if you want to play the Shio Yu comp, but. <sighs> Metabolic's just so easy to play with. You just perma lose streak and make a ton of gold, 
and you don't really have to think about your early game. So I, I really like this augment. It's probably one of my favorites, uh, just because you are guaranteed to get a lot of gold. All right, so in the next shop, we hit Ezreal 2 and Malphite 2. So that's actually a little awkward because we wanted to lose streak, and we won the first one, which is understandable. But we hit a lot of two stars, so that makes us want to win streak now. I get it. Like, we didn't get the ideal metabolic start. Like, you typically want to just lose every round by, like, just one or two units. But I didn't expect my lobby to be so weak. Like, I didn't even think the team I played last game or last round was that strong. I didn't even build any items. I don't have a combat augment. So everyone has, like, a gold augment uh, to help them out. I guess the other person had cluttered mind so he didn't really have a combat augment either but we see the mage namzi right here and i'm like hmm maybe i should go for it it was at this moment i regret selling all the other mages uh, or all the other astrals but we hit so many two stars as like come on <laughs> but we do have the spear of shojin at least so as soon as we can replace this ezreal and ezreal is like the best item game or early game item holder so it's hard to sell an ezreal but once we get Namzi with like a couple mages, we could swap it in. We're actually like last pick, even though we have a horrible augment for getting last pick. Uh, so I guess we just get the glove because sword and bow don't really help out our cause quite yet. But we're into our next shop. We could sell like Zac for maybe Vladimir and Skarner, but like we're going to level up. We're actually going to try to win streak this. Uh, it's going to be hard though. It's not like all sh sunshines and rainbows because again, like if we face someone strong, it's going to be a little bit of trouble. But we're going to put in mages uh, because Namzi just needs a mage. And we have the Shojin for him already. So there is a chance we could win with this and we could sell the other people to get interest. Because again, like as much as I would like to win streak, there's no way we can guarantee the win streak because someone's going to have the same two star upgrades as I do, but with a combat augment and... If I face them, like, I'm going to lose the streak anyway, so I might as well just sell and make 10, even though I'm on a streak right now. Um, but again, selling Ezreal 2 is always hard to do, because he's just so good early on, so it's really tough to say. But Namzi made quick work of this guy's team. He was level 4, so it's pretty good for us. Uh, so we knock him out, and in our next shop, we don't really hit anything special, so we're just going to chill and make 20 gold. So this person has first aid kit. He's got two two stars. So do we, but he has the lagoon trade on them and guardians. So I don't actually know if we win this. Also, I love rolling around as <laughs> whenever I get metabolic accelerator because your little legend does his like run animation, which is a little different. But man, this first aid kit actually did a ton of healing. It's a little little unlucky maybe if we got like more lucky namzi hits we could have won this but this guy isn't even win streaking he's 88 life and we just lose to him randomly it feels bad because we lose our streak obviously but not the end of the world uh by any means so we get a vlad which is good we're gonna sell the rest of our bench to make 30 and we got a belt a glove and a negatron not good at all uh because we really needed like a rod, maybe another tier would have been fine, but we got the most awkward items in the game, which, you know, it happens, right? It's life. But we could build Gargoyle Stoneplate, we could build Sunfire Cape, both of those would do just fine. Uh, we're going to go ahead and slap the Gargoyles onto Malphite now, though, but if you built a Sunfire, I would not be mad at you. We also took out Set for Skarner to get Bruisers. Uh, the reason why I did that is because if we somehow managed to win, we'd be at 36 gold and then we could sell both set and the Talia to get up to 40 gold. So that'd be pretty cool. Uh, get an extra gold there because gold's very important for reroll comps. You want to just build a big economy whenever you play these guys. So um, that's always your goal whenever you're doing this. And Namzi, not doing that much damage yet because we only have mana regen on him. So he's like struggling to kill these one cost units, but he does it eventually. Does he clutch it on the Lux? No. Vlad's got me though, right? Does he got me? Yeah, he's got me. Nice, nice, nice. Sell that, sell this, get to 40. Pretty good. It's a little risky taking out the set because he obviously was upgraded, but holy cow. Mage Heart or Luden's Echo? Really tough decision here because they're both really good for the comp, but if you're going Mages, like, don't you have to take Mage Heart? Both of them are good though. I think Mage Heart's slightly better because, uh, like, when you are playing Namzi, 
especially if you're doing like a Shoujin build, like getting more free AP from having more mages is really critical. I make a mistake here. So I should have leveled up here and that would have given me five mages, but I was asleep at the wheel. Don't do that. Don't drink and drive. Don't AFK and play TFT because I was, I looked at the replay and like, I just did nothing the whole round. Like, I don't think my mouse button moves. I was just like AFK after I picked my augment. Um, I sometimes just do that because it's like just a game, you know, uh, you don't have to take everything so seriously. So if you have to like do something else, just like go ahead and do that. Um, but that's why we review the videos because we can see what we did wrong and what we did correctly. Luckily we won that round so we can make 50 anyways by selling the extra Skarner, but we really should look into getting that fifth mage in. Um, yeah, so I level up here and we're good. If we win, we get 50 gold. I also slapped the belt onto Malphite because I'm probably not keeping Malphite later into the game. And honestly, it doesn't matter if you're running Malphite or Skarner. You typically run Skarner because you're running Astrals for most of the part of the game, but I did sell the extra one star Skarner just to make extra gold. Do we clutch this or is Ezreal 2 too good? Ezreal 2 is too good. Also the Zippy kind of smurf. So we actually like didn't kill many units even though we had a pretty close fight, but this guy has swift shot, press the attack, I believe is what it's called. And he's got a guild uh, heart. So he's definitely going the Zaya comp. Very strong comp throughout the whole set. So we get complete garbage here. I guess we'll settle for the tier and probably just build a hand of justice because like getting rid of these gloves, we're gonna have to get very specific items. We might as well just power spike with the tier. So we'll just drop that on Namzi. Having like a semi healing item on him isn't that bad anyways. We're facing this Astral player. He's got Axiom Arc and Tiny Titans. Uh, but I think we win this. There's a blue buff on Kaisa, but yeah. Mana regeneration on Namzi with the Shoujin is, just makes him cast so early. It's really nice. Keep in mind, this is one star Namzi. I know this person has one star Kaisa, but the two star Namzi, like the difference between one tapping and not one tapping is really big in fights. New shop, not too much to do here. So we're just waiting on level seven for now. Oh, this is the guy who ended our streak last time. This is the first aid kit guy. Uh, hopefully we get some revenge because that really screwed us up. We would have had like maybe 10 more gold, somewhere around there, if we didn't lose that game. Oh man, that really hurt. Maybe like 15 gold actually. But not able to get revenge. This guy beat us again. Come on. <laughs> it's a tough life out there, but sometimes that happens. Uh, so no streak into this new one. Not that we had one before this loss anyways. So we just have to focus on what our life total is. Right now we're at 82 life, which isn't so bad. We could get a two-star Lilia if we will really want here. I go ahead and buy that, drop her in. And we'll eventually replace this Malphite with a Skarner. Maybe once we get a Skarner too. Having in like three Astrals, it's nice, but it's not like the most important thing in the world. Uh, so we get two rods. That's pretty good. You could build hat or you could build a spell crit. I think hat is slightly better on Namzi, but I don't think there's too much of a difference. And I'm going to roll down here because we need some upgrades. It's a little risky because we don't have pairs, but we do get the Lux too. So that's good. And hopefully we can get this Silas too, because that's a pretty big power spike, but we're unable to, oh, we get it on the last one. Perfect. And then we drop in this Vlad, we get seven mages, really good stuff, clear our bench a bit. Um, I decide to opt for the jeweled gauntlet here. Maybe hat's better. <sighs> oh no, I actually do build the hat. Because ability power on mages are, is just so good. And I don't want to rely on a lucky crit in order to kill people. It depends on the matchup, obviously. Like some matchups, their threshold of the unit health just happens that like just having the raw hat damage is enough to kill things. But other times the jeweled gauntlet, you need to crit to one tap people. If not, you have to cast like two or three times. Okay, Celestial Blessing, Essence Theft, or Stand United. Well, we already have healing from Hand of Justice. Essence Theft is a mage thing and we're running seven mages. So that's pretty much a no brainer to take that there. Um, we sold the Malphite for the Skarner now. Um, the reason why we do that is because we want to make 50 gold if we sell this Lux. We could also reroll Lux for 3 star. I think we don't need Lux 3 star though because we're not really itemizing her. We just really need this Namzi, Namzi 2 because we're, <laughs> we're at Namzi 1 right now. No Namzi pair either so it's a little sketchy right now to play this. 
Um, not that, yeah, it, it, it's still playable right now because like people in masters, low masters, they don't really know how to form like the good mid game boards that well yet. So I can kind of get away with this. But if you're in lower elo, you could get away with even more, you know? Uh, so if you're lower than masters, like the games are just gonna be that much easier. We're facing a Som one. This guy's level seven, ten gold, and this is his board. This is exactly what I'm talking about. Like, I'm not flaming the guy, but he's got Som one star. He's got a Zyra two and a Malphite two, and he's got ten gold at level seven. Like, I'm not trying to be mean, but like, that's just not like a real, real board. You know, I know my board's not strong either. I'm running like a Namzi one, but I also have fifty gold at level seven, so it's it's a little different. So we have a glove and a belt, so we want to go for a Zizorot portal, so probably the bow will do just fine. If not, getting maybe like a Thieves Glove is good too. No, we had Metabolic, but the other guy still beats us to the item. It's actually so cringe. We should theoretically get that item every time, on average, because we're picking at the same time and I have Metabolic Accelerator, so I should be able to get a faster pick order than him, or like run to the item faster, but it literally spawned in front of him, so he just gets that item. It's Kind of cheap, in my opinion. I, I wish things worked out differently. I'm going to Thieves Gloves the Lilia because I'm most likely selling her for other stuff later on. And she's upgraded to two stars. So some people might have put it on like their Skarner or something. Uh, but Lilia is just a stronger unit than everyone else I have right now. The only other argument would be for Lux because like, hey, she's a two cost and she's two star as well. It's the same power level as Lilia. But she doesn't use things like tank items as well as Lilia. So... Uh, that's why I did not put it on Lux. Man, this Zippy guy is really causing me a lot of trouble. This is the second time he's beat me, and I just couldn't. All his guys are like so low health, and it's frustrating in that sense. 73 gold here. I'm just going to go ahead and pre-level to level 8. Obviously, you didn't have to pre-level. You could have just kept 73 gold, but I like to do it just to, um, so I don't have to waste as much time later on before I roll. Look at this Namzi. He just dodges all the Zyras. I think that's like the main strength of Namzi. It's like he just dodges Zyra, and Zyra's really meta this set. Well, this guy's got a Graves too. Holy cow. All right, yeah, we lose this one for sure, but that's perfectly fine because, like, we have a lot of gold. We're going to do a big roll down. Hopefully, we get Namzi 2 star, maybe even 3 star later on. All right, so Treasure Dragon. This one's useless. Can't use Edge of Night. DZ Rot Portal. Yay. And we got a Redemption or a Zeke's. It's good enough. I would take this looking in hindsight right now. Uh, but I guess if you re-rolled for like an even better thing, I don't know what you'd be looking for though. Like we, we just need tank items and we got one from that. Uh, but we need to roll down. And also I don't want to waste too much time because we need to roll down as well, right? Uh, we're looking for, what's his name? Two star, Nomzi two star. There's our first copy of Nomzi. Took long enough. Uh, anyone else? Any other Namzers in the chat? All right, so we get Namzi 2 over there. Put that on, yeah. That guy, Zeke's up our guy in the back. Do we want Shojin? Do we want Redemption? Do we want Zeke's? Honestly, if we had a Zoe, I'd slam Shojin right away onto Zoe. But if we don't get that, like, Zeke's might not be bad. Not a bad choice at all. But I end up putting the Shojin on the Lux, and I think that's because I could sell the Lux later on if I do hit a... Zoe. So I could just sell the Lux, put in a new Lux, and then take out one of the crappy mages such as like Lilia and run that instead. We also still only have Skarner 1, so <laughs> our tank line is a joke right now. But that's what the ZZ Rots are for. Wait, Lux casted and it went towards the Aoshin, but it didn't do damage when she died. That's really strange. Lots of... I don't know if that's intended or not. Alright, so we see a Yasuo here. We don't have Mage Cap. We also don't have blue buff we also don't have that many copies of namzi so we don't want to roll down and roll for namzi here oh this guy has all my namzis he's also got mage cap and skarner 3 and he's got pretty much the same augments as i do interesting to see who will win this game i smashed him nice or did we my namzi's still alive so i should win right theoretically speaking let's take a look at uh what items he had so his namzi had shojin archangel's gunblade we have very similar items. I wonder which one's actually better. Looking at the fight, was it our tank line that was better? Yeah, he has he has no ZZ route, so maybe that's why we won. Uh, but going into the next round, we have 40 gold again. We could just chill here. 
We have nothing to roll for right now. The only upgrades is getting a Zoe 1 and Skarner 2 and Zyra 2. That's about it. Uh, notice how we put our Skarner one square back. Zizirot still takes aggro from people, um, but maybe people target Silas for his Gargoyle stone plate, like the units in the back line. Uh, that's why I've been positioned like that. It's a little weird. You could have Skarner up front still. It honestly probably makes barely any difference. Uh, Zaya 2, this is the best friend guy, or no, sorry, the press the attack guy that beat us all the other times, but holy cow, Heimerdinger smurf, he just went directly for the Zyra, and then Zyra smurf there, very nice kill. Our Namzi even targeted the not Zaya unit on the other side, but it was still fine because Zyra rooted everyone. So here, we could go for Ionic, we could go for Titans, it... We could go for Zephyr. Honestly, none of these items actually matter that much. Uh, Ionic Spark doesn't really isn't really necessary because we have Whispers, so that's why people don't really build this item anymore. But it, it's whatever; it's decent enough. Maybe Titans was better though. But since the other person was going for the Ionic Spark item, it's good to just snipe it from him, so he just doesn't have it. You know, uh, it's a Som One guy again, or is this a different Som One person? Not the best items for it either. Whenever you run stuff like Luden's Echo, you need mana regeneration items. I don't care what it is. I don't care how many times you need to reroll on the Treasure Dragon. You just need like mana regen whenever you take something like Luden's. Obviously, he beats us, so I look like an idiot now. But trust me, that guy's not going to go that far um, in this game. I guess he got top four, so never mind. He did get far. I don't know how. Again. It's like the mystery of low elo masters. Sometimes you just get a really weak board and don't get punished. Again, it's not really like smack talking. It's just like truth, you know? Sometimes truth hurts to hear. Uh, obviously, like some people think masters is high. Some people think it's low. It depends on like where you're at, I guess. Um, like if you're lower than it, you can't really trash talk it. But if you're higher than it, then like maybe you can, I guess. I don't really know how that works. Uh, but we're at 67 gold. I'm not spending my gold because I'm seeing if I magically hit a bunch of Namzis before I roll down or power level up. Uh, so we're just going to wait on that. We get a really good item here. Chalice of Power. That's probably the best thing we could have gotten other than like another ZZ Rod. We get that there. 68 to level. Might as well level. It doesn't look like we're getting the Namzi 3 here because we just haven't received the other copies. It was like kind of contested before. We get a Bard. Bard would be nice to drop in as a random flex. And, okay, nothing else. No Skarner 2. Not that it makes that much of a difference. Maybe we could run Terra somehow, though. Like, we could maybe take out Zyra and Bard for Terra. Or maybe Zyra and Skarner for Terra. And the reason why you want to take those units out is because, again, we don't need Whispers because we have the Ionic Spark now, so it's not as important to have. So you always need to think about, like, times when you can flex out certain units. This time is one of those times where Zyra isn't as important as she normally is. Come on, Namzi. Kill the nice. With the Lux, we're able to get enough damage and knock this guy out. That's good for a top three. Not bad for Namzi too, right? You also have to keep in mind, we didn't lose streak with Metabolic. So it's like we didn't use half the augment in the early game. So a lot of these games, you'd have even more gold than I would have right now because you'd lose all those early games. Uh, okay, the Soam guy is okay, looking pretty strong right now. I'm always positioning weirdly, trying to mix and match the rows a bit so that I don't get hit by Zyra too hard. Namsi normally moves up when he's in the corner because he's only three range, but this guy has a Nyla that just jumps to the back line and blocks the walkway. So I actually got like forehead positioned here because Zyra was able to hit my Namzi, and that actually decided the fight. So that's really bad. I have to make sure that doesn't happen again. Also, I know there was a Namzi in my shop, but I'm not going to get it because I simply don't have enough gold to get Namzi 3 this game. So we're just going to, this is just our team right now. We could pivot into Ao Shin, but we have two Mage Augments. So it's like, it's kind of a waste if we go for that. We hit the Bard 2 there, but we're going to have to wait till next round. Uh, some people might argue that like, oh, you rolled down and then like you couldn't buy it. Couldn't, didn't you just like waste your gold? Sometimes yes, but sometimes no, because other people could be going for Bard as well. So hitting it now denies it from other people or denies it getting stolen from you next turn. 
Uh, okay, this guy has... Okay, this is a Grave Seraphine player. Holy cow, our Bard actually smurfed, stunned his whole team. Is that enough? I don't think we're able to kill this Graves. He's too tanky right now. So we lose this one, but that's fine. The other person's at 5 health, so... Maybe the Bard too helps out a bit. Maybe we get a good item here. We have an extra belt. We could build like a Morello there. We're probably getting Shroud though, because not because we want Shroud, but we don't want to get Shrouded, because that's one of the counters to this Namzi comp. All right, so we buy this Bard, Bard 2, Astral, we get, oh, Skarner 2. Huge upgrades there, right? <laughs> All right, we'll sell this guy, and then we'll just like cheese the Shroud. All right, so we face a Som Ghost. We're just going to drop this on Zyra. I don't think we hit the Som, but we didn't have anyone in the right position to kind of kind of hit that so that's I don't know if he did that on purpose or not but holy cow bard smurfed got a really good AoE stun there and we didn't get trapped by the Nyla this time so Zyra didn't root us so we're able to win that one pretty easily so we got second place pretty good are we able to beat this guy though nothing in our shop we're oh Zoe nice of you to show up a little late to the party but we'll take you you know take out Lilia or Vlad doesn't really matter you don't really need the astral gold anymore. I should probably item remove maybe the Lilia or I item remove the Zyra so that I could shroud again. But this guy's going for the Seraphine build. So like he never really, oh, Seraphine three. I hate Seraphine three. It's so hard to beat. But also the Graves comp, I think Graves is too tanky for us anyway. So we probably can't win unless we get like really lucky Zoe ultimates. Really lucky as in we get like the invulnerability one when we're about to get hit. Um, maybe like the Ivern one's decent as well. Uh, maybe the Janna one if he, she gets a good group. But yeah. Seraphine 3. Probably going to beat my Namzi 2. We just didn't hit the Namzi 3 this game like we tried, right? So just FF there and good game. Um, but yeah, hopefully this helps you guys get into like master's tier i believe this game was at around like uh high diamond low masters so it's like if that's your experience climbing into masters as well like let me know down in the comments below but apart from that hopefully you guys enjoyed this series about like mage namzi it is forcible for sure and hopefully if you see it in your games you could go for it obviously you're not going to win every time unless you hit the namzi 3 or like Zoe early on, but uh, it's definitely good for like top fouring and things of that nature. But hope you guys enjoyed this and I'll see you all next time. Hey guys, thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to share and subscribe. And of course, smash that like button. Each like is an LP I gained before the next video.